All right, we have with us today Terrence Patterson uh, from uh, Massachusetts, somewhere up in Massachusetts. I don't know where, but uh, we'll say it's somewhere all over the state of Massachusetts that he uh, works. I am downtown Attleboro, Massachusetts. You know what I found, Terrence, is there's really no, there is no security out there mm. in today's world. Uh, even if you've got a real solid job, uh, making a good income, mm -hmm. you, can, you can get that pink slip any day, you know. Indeed. Well, you know, before I came down to the training in November of 2011, I was the director of operations for a small company in Braintree, Massachusetts, making a nice six-figure income. I saw where the uh, industry was going, or at least that particular company. And actually how I found you is I, in line, I got online in my office one day and just Googled franchises between 20 and 100K. Huh. So ABS came up. I did the due diligence. Obviously, I spoke to a, a few folks that uh, were licensees that were doing phenomenally well. And um, we came down, took the training, and, and uh, we've been working it ever since. Wow, I'm at the low end of that twenty to 100000 I better go up in price. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And um, as I checked you guys out, everything looked really great. I was very impressed with you when I uh, first talked to you. And, um, and as they say, the rest is history. So... We're really looking to uh, build. Now, you, you said you had a background in health administration. It was like for a hospital, right? You were actually an administrator, or? Oh no, actually, I worked for Blue Cross Blue Shield in management. So oh. I do have a, a master's degree in healthcare administration. So I've worked for a number of insurance companies: United Health Plans, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Delta Dental. Oh, I so see. been around the industry, uh, but not on the billing side in terms of what we're you know doing here. Yeah, it's a whole different world on this side, isn't it? It really is, <laughs> absolutely. But you know, it's kind of like, uh, you remind me of, uh, we have a doctor that's on our advisory board and uh, she is moving away from the clinical side of medicine to the business side where the money is, she says. Oh yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because uh, when I was doing my graduate work, there were two physicians in my class that were getting MBAs uh, because they felt they really needed to understand the business of healthcare, you know? Financing of healthcare, so it's uh, it's a challenge for many. It is, and especially in today's environment, there are doctors uh, completely going out of practice because they they can't really get their cash flow to the point where they're profitable. Absolutely, we have a licensee coming to training here in our next training class that I talked to the other day, just a welcome call, and she said, "Patrick, I've got a doctor who insists that I talk to him before I come to your training. He knows I'm not even in the business." But uh, I guess it's a personal reference. And she says, he, he's desperate. He says he, he is going to have to shut down his practice. He's not profitable and he needs help on the billing side because I think him and his wife do it and they just don't do it very well, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's a real challenge for many. And you're absolutely right. Many are saying I'm, I'm getting out of the business because they just can't manage uh, right. the costs, the write-offs that, you know, they're getting hit with. and Sure. Medicare, Medicaid, changing the rules, it's its a lot, yeah. as you know. Yeah. Terrence, tell me about your, I know I've seen on your website, you have some letters after your name. Uh, tell me what those letters are and what they mean. Oh, yeah. So I have an MED, which is a master's degree in education with a concentration in organizational behavior. And the MHA is a master's of healthcare administration. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, so you found us, uh, and I guess you did you talk to some other licensees before you came down? I did. Uh, I spoke with Ben, who is in the New York market, yeah. uh, doing very well. And uh, I believe he was an attorney uh, before yes. a uh, contracts lawyer, before uh, doing the due diligence on, and I was very impressed with him on your company and decided to invest. And I know he's doing phenomenally well. The New York market. Yes, so, he is. Uh, uh, I spoke he, with two others, but, but Ben really uh, was the one who did it for me. Yeah. One of the things, when I went down and I spent two days with him and his partner uh, in New York, he said it got to the point where I was feeling like I was going to give up. So one of the things he kept saying to me, don't give up, because when you think that it's all over, he said we got our first deal. And we haven't looked back since. Yeah. So, and I think the key is getting that first doctor doing a phenomenal job on the implementation, and the referrals will come. 
Yeah, that's so. that's that's it in a nutshell. Uh, I've had licensees tell me that all they did was do what we said to do, uh, and they tried several times, sometimes some there several different things that we teach. But they finally got that first doctor, and once they did, they realized, oh, all I have to do now is just duplicate what I just did to get this one. <laughs> and what turns out is that sometimes they don't have to do any more marketing. I mean, it's literally it, from the referrals from that doctor if they do a good job, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, why you have to educate yourself about what's going on in the industry, be up to date. And as I told you when we had our last conversation, um, you did an excellent um, webinar on developing a little newsletter. So even if you don't uh, hit that doctor, that office the first time, keep in front of them. Send them a, a quarterly, a monthly newsletter where your name Right. Uh, they're seeing it uh, once a month. And yeah. when the timing is right and they appreciate you, they see you as a consultant, uh, an educator, you're providing them with valuable information, uh, the calls will come. That's really in today's world what, what everybody wants from a marketing standpoint. I want you to position yourself, uh, no matter what you're selling, as the expert in your industry. Even though you may not feel like you are at first, you can appear to be the expert by doing like, like you said, providing some sort of educational materials on a regular basis. Then when it does come time, like you said, sometimes the timing's just not right. Absolutely. But when the timing is right and something happens in the office, like the office manager uh, leaves and finds another job, you know, for a dollar an hour more, or if uh, something else happens, then they're going to think of you because you've kept your name at the top of their mind. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. Joining some uh, professional organizations like the MGMA, which I did, which is a, an association of practice administrators and office managers. So I, I joined the BNI, as you guys had recommended when I was in training. As a matter of fact, my first deal came as a referral from one of my BNI uh, associates. Contacts? Yeah. Oh, good. So, uh, and I just did the numbers. And really, the return on investment and what I put into BNI, 725% when I uh, closed my first deal. <laughs> so, Can't beat that. You, yeah, you've got to do the cost benefit, and it takes a little bit of time for some of us. Others have come out of training and backed the first deal. But the, the point is stick with it, be focused, and keep doing it. And eventually, it will happen if you are determined. The only way you can fail in this business is to give up. If yeah. you stop, of course, you, you, and you haven't got a client, then you failed. Uh, then, like you said, that we have many people, like I have a licensee coming to this next training, like I said, whose doctor wants to meet with her uh, before she comes. So, because she's now a licensee, she completed the paperwork and funded it. We're working with her to do a practice analysis for that doctor before she ever comes. Wow. So we'll get all the information that we need to prepare a proposal for that doctor, and then we'll tell him he's she's coming to training to finalize and so forth. Uh, he'll be ready to go. I mean, wow. he may have even inked the deal. We're hoping we can get a signed agreement before she shows up at the training. That'd be cool. That would be awesome. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and some people leave the class, and we've had people during the week of training be sending out emails and doing some of the things that we're telling and they're lining up appointments with doctors before they even get back the following week. So, oh, yes. It Excellent. happens. Yeah. Well, so tell us a little bit more about this first uh, client that you got. Plastic surgeon um, does uh, breast augmentations and that tummy tucks and the like. So the IT person in my BNI group does their computer work. And so the referral came from that individual. Uh, we gave him, uh, actually, every so often, you get an opportunity to do a 10-minute presentation at the BNI group. So after I did my 10-minute and I talked about what I did and get, gave a little demo about the uh, web-based system, he said, you know, I have a client who I think will benefit from what you provide. I will put you in touch. Huh. And as they say, the rest is history. That's the way it up. works. That's how a referral works, yeah. Yeah, we did the demo. Uh, the doctor loved it, and um, you know, and, and the rest was history. So it took a couple of months from the uh, demo to actually signing the paperwork, but uh, it happened. And, and again, it was the BNI connection that uh, made that happen for me. Yeah. Now, what do you have a feel yet for what kind of volume he does, uh, dollar wise, or? Yeah, well, unfortunately, as you know, many of the uh, surgeon, uh, he's probably 80% cash. So, yeah, because it's uh, elective surgery. Exactly. Yeah, right. So, 
so his volume isn't that high uh, in terms of reimbursement and, and what's uh, coming back to him. Right. But again, we talked about how we priced the system in my market. And so we had a pretty nice uh, uh, markup there in terms of um, you know, what we uh, charged for the system. Yeah, because uh, one of his surgeries might be several thousand dollars. So he might not do a lot of claims, but the one right. he does, you'll make good money on. It's God. pretty significant, indeed. Right, right. Didn't you indicate <laughs> that that might be uh, a pretty good uh, volume for you each year, just from that one doctor? Yeah, well, actually, no, the one I was telling you about was the podiatrist that uh, we're about to get him going. Oh. He's seeing 52 patients uh, a day. Wow. So um, he's got a pretty high volume. He's seeing 1,050 patients roughly a month. Oh, my gosh. So, that is uh, a busy that's, practice. That's, yeah. that's busy practice. So he's got a staff of six. He's looking at bringing on a part-time uh, podiatrist. He has two locations that he, he's shuttling between those two locations. Uh, but uh, they're doing a, a nice uh, piece of business there, so that will be a nice one for me. That's terrific. Now, how did you get to find that doctor? Actually, um, I did the um, the marketing plan from I sent out the cards. I had an eight month campaign. He was on the list, right? And again, at one of my B and I groups, I'm doing it, and he says, "You know, this doctor." Um, I think they received one of your cards. As a matter of fact, I also do the computer work for that practice. <laughs> oh. so I'm going to mention you to the office manager, by the way, who happens to be his sister. So he did. I followed up with a phone call. Uh, I did a, a drive-by. I stopped in, and she spent 30 minutes with me, and I didn't even have an appointment really that day. And we set up the demo, and... Um, and we're moving forward with that one. So uh, that too was the IT guy in my B and I group who gave it a nudge along. But they had received eight of my cards from the send out cards. Uh, so that's how that one came about. Wow! So our uh, our staff gave the demo for you for yeah. her, <clears throat> and uh, once she saw the demo, she goes, "Wow, this is it! Huh? It was just done deal, Absolutely. huh?" Absolutely. The doctor loved it. Um, again, the draw feature for him, too, um, was very, very powerful. And again, just the efficiencies that uh, the systems are going to bring from how they're currently uh, doing their process was just, uh, you know, out of the park. You're so. talking about uh, when, when uh, the doctor talks about the draw feature, he's talking about when he's on the iPad, right? Correct. Uh, and he's using the electronic medical records part. He can actually draw and circle things right there on exactly. the drawing, drawing of the foot. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. You got it. And of course, as you know, Patrick, those drawings are then uh, goes right into the patient's chart. So right. it makes it a lot easier, a lot more efficient, uh, not having to mail super bills and just uh, the efficiencies alone that it's going to bring to his office is a huge savings. Yeah, I, I don't even know if this was demonstrated during the demo, but uh, I don't know how they would demonstrate this. But did you know that you, the doctor can actually take that iPad, <clears throat> switch over to the camera feature, take a picture of the foot, for example, and then push a button and boom, it's right there in the patient record as well. <laughs> yeah, well, for the plastic surgeon, that was the big seller. As I'd mentioned to you, they're spending hundreds of dollars a week or every other week going down to CVS, getting photos developed. Because if you went to his website, he takes pictures of all of the work he's done, not showing the head, of course, of the patient, but, you know, the, the right. chest area or wherever he's done, uh, you know, tummy tuck. And he's been paying to have those developed. And so when we told him right from the iPad, he, he was just blown away. Time so they, they literally take a picture with film, <laughs> go to CVS and have it developed. You got it. It just seems so archaic to me, but uh, indeed. indeed, and then have to come back and upload those to his website. So he was just blown away with uh, how he can significantly reduce the cost and be more efficient with that part of his practice because he, he takes pictures of everything. He must be spending a lot of money just on the Absolutely. developing. Well, that's incredible. Well, uh, so that one, you're you're in the implementation stage right now. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's great. Uh, yeah. So is this particular doctor, you said he was opening up, uh, he has, has two clinics now, and he's hiring uh, some more people, I guess. Right. Uh, 
I, I guess he's pretty well connected, do you think, in, in the community? Once you do a job for him, and aren't there other podiatrists up there in Massachusetts? Oh, uh, a ton of them. Uh, and actually, as I might have mentioned to you, during the demo, while we were chatting and going over the proposal, uh, a, a physician um, who is close by, who happens to be an ophthalmologist, he said, I mentioned his name came up in conversation. He says, oh, I know him. Once we get situated, he's a, I mentioned I'm having trouble that he did not want to go with an electronic system because he had a bad experience and they're doing everything by paper now. He says, listen, I know him. He's a pushover. We'll get him on board once we get ourselves straightened out. <laughs> so that was a really, I was, I was so encouraged. So yeah, well, uh, that's, that's true of a lot of doctors. They, they buddy with them. They, they golf with them. You know, they're members of the yeah. country club. And so a lot of that spreads just through word of mouth. Indeed. Yeah. And so I'm uh, extremely confident that once we do a phenomenal job on the implementation for this podiatrist, that the referrals will come. So I'm extremely excited, Patrick. Oh, I can tell. It's, um, it's, it's happening. Yeah. Now, did you get some kind of setup fee? Oh, yes, absolutely. So um, in this area, uh, $73.95 is um, what we charged. And um, so far, we haven't had um, any doctors blink at that. Now, just to clarify for the listeners, that's $7,395, yeah. That's correct. That is correct. <laughs> and there are EMR companies out there that charge uh, much more than that, $10,000, dollars dollars yeah, Absolutely. for setup and training and so forth. So, Absolutely. So as I mentioned, uh, I have a proposal out to a physical therapy group in Connecticut, 16 therapists. And when they got back to me, we were one of three. They told me that one of the other folks came in at two and a quarter. That's $225,000. Uh, for a set of That's fee. For a set of fee. Yeah. Wow. So they said you were way, way, in, yeah, I mean, below what we've got, what these guys were charging. It's just phenomenal. And what really I think will sell it was the simplicity of the system. Because... Yeah. They weren't giving up anything with our system or what we presented versus the other two that were on the table that were, you know, tens of thousands outside the ballpark. So the thing that I need to, in this marketplace, be uh, concerned with is coming in too low. Yes. And I'll never forget it, Patrick. One of the first proposals I did was for two doctors in New York. They came back to me and said, we had another quote, but my partner felt, didn't know how you would be able to do it uh, that inexpensive. So sometimes what happens is if you come in too low, they're thinking, how good is the system? Yes. Right? That's so right. I didn't even actually get to the point. I think if I'd gotten to the point to do a demo for them, that might have clinched it. Right. But they were just comparing numbers at that point and sure. said, this guy's a little too low. How good could it be? Yes. So... Okay, so you got this, uh, this setup fee then, the seventy three ninety five from both of these clients so far. Well, one of the two. Um, I, the podiatrist, uh, we're looking to close them in the next week or two. Good, good. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, got, uh, you said you got half down uh, at the signing of the contract. Correct. Yeah. Uh, so we do 50% at the signing of the contract and then 50% after we, uh, the implementation is done. Yeah. I think you sent... Uh, an image of that check that you got to uh, we did. To I just wanted you guys to know. <laughs> so I'm very proud of you, uh, Terrence. Yeah. You have just done exactly what I expected of you when I first met you. Well, look, we uh, we thank you again for the time today, and I appreciate so much. And let us know what we can do to to move you forward. Excellent, Patrick. Thank you so much. Be I well. appreciate. It. Alrighty, be well. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Bye bye.